a dive into the worm reef. A literal dive into the worm reef. Before we get started, I want to mention there's a correction from the last video, A Journey Through the Indian River. Uh, this fish was very interesting. We spotted them in the rocks here and I identified it as a spotted drum, but it's actually a hi-hat fish or striped drum. Um, they live in rocks and in coral reef and they eat crab, shrimp, and invertebrates. And they're very non-aggressive, so they commonly live with other species of fish, as you can actually see in the background there. They share that cave with a few different other species of fish. So here we are at Bathtub Reef Beach. This beach has a reef made not of coral, but of sea worms, called sabalarid worms. And it's incredibly unique. These birds here that exhibit male pattern baldness are called the royal tern. They're not a gull, but a tern. They're in fact the second largest tern in the world. This beach is host to over 500 marine species and hundreds of other terrestrial species. Betha Beach is home to three different types of sea turtles that nest on the beach, including loggerhead, green sea turtle, and leatherback. As we head out to the ocean, we get a little bit of luck here, right at the beginning. You see in the distance there, there's a small shark, about three feet long. Most likely a juvenile spinner shark. Spinner sharks are known for jumping out of the water and spinning when they attack their prey. I'm gonna slow it down zoom in here to see if you guys can get a better look at this shark. Alright, let's dive in. As soon as I go under, I see Mahara fish. They're probably nibbling at my legs before I got my face down in here. Look, we find a huge conch shell. Touch it and see if it's alive. Nope. It's not alive. You see this shell can grow to any size and still maintain space for its creature. It's created with the principles known as the golden ratio. This principle is found in wave formations, galaxies, proportions of the human body, and much more. Known as Phi, it was coined the Golden Ratio by Pythagoras in ancient Greece. shallows. Let's head out to the reef. It's a little bit of a struggle here to get through the tide. You see the waves crash right where the reef begins and there can be a lot of turmoil trying to get out. But once you get past it, you enter into the calm seas and you can swim around and see all the wildlife. of orange boring sponge and also we come across these crevices in the reef where rock deposits settle. We finally make our way out into the reef past the break and we immediately see tons of fish all swimming together. 
The yellow and black ones are called Sergeant Major. They're one of the most striking small fish in the reef. This entire reef is made by sabalarid worms and not by coral. These worms create little tubes out of sand and broken shells and they glue them together with secretions. They have a small lid on the top of their shells called opercolum that open and close and their heads come out to feed small little tentacles and as stuff floats by they grab it with the tentacles and feed. Floating over this reef feels like flying over an alien landscape, except that it's thriving with life. You can see the entire landscape is covered this orange sponge all over the worm reef. It's easy to forget that sponges are animals. They feed by passively letting water pass through their pores and collecting small microorganisms. I can follow these channels through the reef to find fish, using them as avenues of transport and also areas of protection. They make their homes underneath. Often you may even see a nurse shark down in these channels. The larger areas of reef can form caverns and cliffs and small caves for larger fish to make their home. see the tide swaying every single creature back and forth, including myself. This system of reefs goes on for miles both north and south of here. There's a sense of adventure and discovery as you travel through the channels. You never know what kind of sea life you might come across, and what kind of bizarre landscapes you might float over. Here we see a school of Crevalli jackfish. They're similar to Pompano, except Pompano don't have a dark spot near the gills. Wow, we come across a huge school of look-down fish, similar to the Atlantic moonfish, but with Sith-like boomerang fins, much longer and more colorful. Here we see a lone jackfish. And now, an 
adult pork fish. We saw in the Indian River a baby pork fish. Now we see the fully realized adult. This fish is curious and friendly. And I feel beckoned to follow it. I follow it into deeper waters to see where it will lead me. The pork fish is named after the sound it makes, which is similar to a pig. And now I swim right back into the school of look-down fish. Their colors are mesmerizing in the sunlight. In addition to their boomerang fins, you see a distinct angular forehead. And just like that, they disappear into the vast blue void of the ocean beyond. Here at the bottom of the screen we see an adult sheep's head. Sheep's head have distinct teeth, which is what their name comes from, sheep's teeth, but maybe even more closer to human teeth. I highly recommend you look up a picture of the teeth of this fish. It's hard to tell whether it's a green sea turtle or a loggerhead. One thing I can tell you is it's amazing and beautiful and you just don't expect to be in the ocean in a reef and see a large reptile come swimming out from behind the cracks. If anyone can identify if this is a loggerhead or green sea turtle, please leave a comment below. large predator appears from out of the blue, quite literally. Is it a shark? A barracuda? No, it's a snook. About a four foot long ambush predator, but not dangerous to humans. It has no teeth. It gulps its prey. But it shows you how quickly a large creature can appear out of nowhere, and the danger and mystery of this deep blue ocean. Here we see another large conch shell, but much deeper this time. I'm completely surrounded by this massive school of jackfish. The fish must number in the thousands. Every which way I swim, I'm surrounded. They seem to follow me from everywhere I go this entire journey. Jackfish are powerful predatory fish, and sometimes they get blown north. If they don't migrate back to the south in time for winter, the coldness can cause massive mortalities. my friend the pork fish. I wonder what other secrets he could lead me to out here in the ocean. But there's no telling how many discoveries can be found in this vast watery wilderness. And as I follow these fish, they lead me to one of the most unexpected and exciting things I've ever seen in my life. It's 
the hull of a sunken ship. This area is known as the Treasure Coast because conditions are ripe for shipwrecks. In fact, in 1715, there was an entire treasure fleet of the Spanish Empire sunken right here off this coast. Still to this day, people find golden coins worth millions of dollars and ruby encrusted rings from the Spanish galleons. The hull of this ship acts as an artificial reef for all the marine life around. It's an extension of a safe haven where they can travel from one area of the reef to the other and even creates homes for some of the smaller fish. You can see the Sergeant Major use it as a refuge. Now we see a familiar fin come on the scene late. It's our old friend, the porkfish. These fish with the black spots in front of their tail are silver porgy. Silver porgy are hermaphrodites that all start off as female and turn male in midlife. Here again we see sergeant major fish. Sergeant majors are a type of damselfish named after the stripes which look like the insignia on a military rank. Male damselfish are famous for their courtship behavior called the signal jump, in which they rise in a water column and then rapidly swim back downward. Females determine the male courtship rates using the sound produced during the signal jump. As they swim down the water column, there's a pulse sound. And the male courtship varies in the number and rates of those pulses, which is how a female decides if they're desirable. As I swim away from the sunken ship, I run right back into this huge school of jackfish. Jackfish are a popular fish for fishermen because their strong swimming makes them put up a great fight. The jackfish female can produce a million eggs at a time. They reproduce via spawning. The female releases their eggs into the water and the male fertilizes the eggs outside the body. After fertilization, both parents abandon the eggs to float around in water columns until they hatch. The larval fish continue to float in the water columns till they reach a juvenile age in which they swim to shore and sheltered areas and estuaries for safer habitats. Along with the crevalli jack here, other types of jackfish include the look down fish which we saw earlier, the pompano, the permit fish, and amber jacks. For some reason in Canada they call the northern pike a jackfish, but it's completely different. That's a freshwater, long, narrow fish. Time now to start finding my way back to the shoreline. I got a little turned around out here 
and I'm probably about a mile north of where I started. I just can't seem to shake this school of fish. They seem to be everywhere all at once. Their scales are well designed to reflect light and to distract predators visually. Well, I hope you guys had fun on this trip with me, a dive into the Worm Reef, one of the rarest habitats on Earth and most biodiverse. Here we get one more special treat, a huge permit fish all by himself in the shallows. Look at that guy. Here we get one last glimpse from above the water, the beautiful landscape of Bathtub Reef Beach. Guys, please subscribe and like the video, and if you know whether that sea turtle was a green sea turtle or loggerhead turtle and you could identify it, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome time. See you next time, where we look for ancient reptiles.